Hello and welcome to Hibs Talk. I'm your host for the first time, Craig. Joining me today is Dave. All right. And Gav. Hiya. Actually did do it isn't in your style as well, Dave. Aye. I did, aye. How are we? I'm good, mate. You? Aye, all right. Well, it's nice you ask the host how he's doing. It's very new for you. <laughs> I like him, I like you. <laughs> in the comfy seat, so I <laughs> might, might do this more often. How are you doing, Gav? Aye, I'm good. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit nervous. I'm worried that you do a really good job of this and then like all of our social media, it's like, oh, that Craig's a much better host, Gav. Just stick to chipping in or just stick to editing the podcast and leave it to the folk that are better. And, uh, so that, I'm kind of a bit worried about that. Ken, okay, well, I hope we get out of this. What? I hope we get new seats. Because <laughs> you realise how uncomfortable <laughs> the things are. That we I've have to put, I've put two big cushions underneath because my back's bad, so I'll be fine. No, this no. is comfy. Um, but yeah, no, um, I'm good. Look, uh, look, let us know on social media how Craig does as, as a host for the first time. Well, I've done it on live radio, so a podcast that'll be heavily, heavily edited. You'll be fine. Can't be too bad. Right. Um, anyway, to get started, um, the guys over at Since1875 are running a survey on their Twitter, so at1875 underscore since, regarding the introduction of safe standing at Easter Road. I think they've given five options, two in the famous five stand sorry three in the famous five stand and two in the east i think it is so their existing section safe standing the two corner sections of the famous five stand safe standing um or section 43 and then 44 45 in the east so what did you go for if you voted i I did vote vote. i went for a 44 45 i think but in hindsight i don't think that would be the best option and i don't think if, if they're working with the club in terms of introducing us i don't think since it's been let's say a problem area in the past i can't see something like that being introduced there so i think the famous five is probably more likely dave yeah i voted uh, 20 purely because if they're putting a safe standing section in you want to generate an atmosphere i think the corner of the least like you can't see that way fans and I don't think the guys that are sitting in there would enjoy enjoy that as much. I don't like sitting in the corners. Mm. I like being able to see like their way support. I think the way support does help generate a bit of an atmosphere. If they yeah. gain you it, you gain them it back. So I think um, I think that's why forty three worked in the past. Yeah, because it was kind of close, and you could aye, no, definitely. Aye, Dave, what you, uh, Craig, what did you vote for? Uh, I went famous five lower because I, th- I think there's more potential for it to expand as well. And you see how well it's worked for Liverpool. Aye, as also, you look at um, what's done. Uh, did you see Aberdeen on yeah. Saturday? So they had a big, a big thing about the red stand or the home end or something. Going back to the home end and their end behind the goals. No, the big Lego brick stand. You know the one at the, the far end for where we yeah. would be, and they move it. They, they packed like the middle three sections and they just made an atmosphere, all game. So I think you'd be met with some some form of resistance given that there'll be people who sit at Easter Road in their seats and they've sat there for a long time. But there's also day sections are where there's swazzy empty seats mm. every weekend. So I, from the from what they put on it anyway, it looks like they're in positive discussions with the club and the club have been encouraging. So watch the space. So that's at 1875 underscore since on Twitter. Moving on to news then. Latest news is that Stefan Omionga is back from Genoa on a deal until the end of the season at least. Dave, in one word... What's your thoughts? Buzzing. Gav? Delighted. Buzzing and delighted. Well, interesting. I'm not allowed to have an opinion this week. <laughs> so, um, we had a <clears throat> question come through on Twitter from Alan McFarlane, who has, <clears throat> excuse me, basically said that he, uh, so he's a diehard Hibby season ticket holder for years. He wants to know why everyone is getting so excited over Omionga's return. He played 16 games, wanted to assist at most. But he worked hard and was a good player, but come on, he's no Sozzi or McGinn or McNulty, etc. And the Hibernian, F- uh, Hibernian FC official page saying, welcome home. Please explain this to me. So that probably leads into a... We'll start on Omionga, the player, first. Mm-hmm. Gav, do you see any merit in what Alan's saying? Why are, why are we so excited about Omionga coming back? I can understand it from, you know, looking at the basics. I mean, you, you can... Uh, you know, one assist and zero goals is what he got in his in his first six months here. So you kind of look at that and you kind of like, wait, right, what's kind of offering? And um, I've kind of got some stuff. So I'll come back to in a second. You know, comparing him to Malin because it seems to be he's a replacement for Malin who's out injured now. Um, but I mean, just from, uh, from you know taking the, the stats and all that out of it, he's a guy who 
I think, bought into the club. You, Craig, you've spoken in the podcast before about people that, you know, maybe not hibbies, but people that have come into the club and bought in what, what the club is. Liam Fontaine, John McGinn, um, people like that. So I think he was one of them. He came in and in such a short sp- spell of time, he fell in love with the fans. The fans f- fell in love with him. And I think there was just his commitment, his passion. His, he, he's somebody that covers a lot of uh, grass in a game. And I think that sort of desire that he shows in the pitch is why fans are so excited. Uh, it's not all about goals and assists. I mean, the assist that he has got, we'll remember it brilliantly was the one for McNulty away to St Johnston which was an absolute peach that's what you'd be looking for for Scott Allen um, but just based on what Gav says Dave do you think uh, because Omionga bought into Hibs Hibs bought into Omionga is that more of a factor in him coming back than his actual ability ah, well, he's definitely got ability like I've heard folk say that he, he's actually probably too good for Hibs and he doesn't actually realise how good he is um, and I think he showed that in snippets like that that game we played at Easter Road that he played against Scott Brown um, he showed that he had actually a, a wee bit of character in him like that 40 that's the quite smirk famous uh, the smirk 40 and that we don't, have, we don't have anything like that now and I think fans buy into players that are, like buy into the club like you were saying um, and it gives you a bit more leeway like if you can have a couple of bad games because at the end of the day he does seem like dead keen to play for the club and that's what we need we need people that that want to play and I, I think it's just a really like, positive move um, and hopefully I, he can do pretty decent so this then leads on to like you say positive move bringing him in the fanfare that sort of surrounded his arrival uh-huh. the whole you know somebody going on dot net somebody posted on .net basically managing to pick out where he was while he was in the air realised that he w- he'd posted it four hours ago but the flight would have been four hours ago because you can't get 4G while you're up in the air he's flying north over the Swiss Alps no south so he must be coming blah 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 and also Hibs announced it with the video we're arriving on your flight arriving Omeonga Edinburgh Airport etc etc and then the caption Steph's home yep does that sit right with you saying home if as an, as it was announced, it's only a six month loan without the chance of it going any further. Do you see this maybe Hibs having something in the background so it is a loan and if he does well, it's a case that it'll be announced permanently in the summer, Gav? From hearing him speak today at the press conference, um maybe not so much the the one that's up in Hibs T V but the, the more so when he was speaking to the papers. So I'll maybe cut sort of not say too much because the papers want their stories. But I think you could tell that he doesn't see his future in Italy. Um, you know, Genoa are sitting bottom of the league. If they get relegated, it's not a place he wants to go. He's never really been made to feel at home there anyway. I think he, like we've said, he's bought into Hibs, but I think he his intention was always to come back here. And I think if he gets his way, he would be here. Obviously, he's got a, a longer contract at Genoa, so that'll kind of play a part of that. But from hearing the way he speaks, he wants to be here. He sees this as his home. And I think... Like say that's probably one of the reasons people are kind of reacting that way. Yeah, well, you've seen the same with uh, it's got a, a similar thing when Malonga played with Hibs. He kind of bought it and he loved it, had a bit of part with the fans, and I think that type of thing helps. And that's where the uh, this may be a wee bit off topic, but I think it actually matters is see the the content that the the club produce to the fans. Like, would we've bought in El Malonga as much if he didn't have like his wee videos and that that he was doing and mm-hmm. that probably not and it was the same when Malonga was at Hibs the um, outside the box stuff with ah, Tony Tons- Tons- yeah. yeah. like the Yaldi mm-hmm. and like going into Edinburgh with the Jimmy hat on that he just seemed to buy into it and was like okay mate, I'm here I'm kind of a bit of laughing that with the club so I think that definitely definitely helps and what I can't remember the initial question do you know what well I, I just what was it no it was just you feeding on for feeding Gav on I, I just think Aye. Decent. I, I remember when I was doing a um, press conference last season and I asked him a question about you know the Hibs fans really taking to him and stuff and I, I always remember what he said he said they show me love and I think him saying things like that really helped the, f- the fact that he was acknowledging it and accepting it and you know showing that love back is why there's such that connection from a guy that was like say only year six months so do you think 
obviously if we we all take it in our workplaces we get to work and that and folk are being sound to you and do you know what I mean like a, there's a good atmosphere and you're appreciated in your work you're obviously you're going to do a better job mm. so you could look at that in other ways when it, like for other players like Camberry for example slated all the time for doing his job like and scapegoat for, in a lot of uh, situations and you maybe look but like, well maybe that's why he doesn't perform so well every game and to, this, to the level that he can every game it's because he gets basically uh, scapegoated yeah I need maybe needs to be shown about that last but like and the guy's question about you know why should he get excited getting back to get to that so I've got some stats here that I kind of thought I'd go over um, so uh, Omion goes out for two to three months uh, Milan uh, no he's no that'd be what that'd be bad Malin is out for two to three months um, and Jack Ross kind of had to say that this is kind of seen as a, a replacement and might have kind of he didn't, he didn't say definitely whether or not we would have went for Omion if Malin hadn't got injured but it kind of sounded that way um, so comparing them their stats from last season He's outperforming Malin in the majority of things, apart from like say assists. Uh, the he's putting on pressure on all opposition players on average twenty six times a game uh, compared to Malin, who's only seventeen. Uh, pressure regains about uh, four a game, which is out much outperforming Malin. Um, looking at you know Malin this season, obviously that's who we're going to be missing out on. Uh, he was only managing two point three intercep- interceptions a game. On Omiyonga was managing three point nine. Uh, he was winning sixty percent of his defensive duels. Malin only forty five. So I think he's a bit of an, a more all round player that we're kind of getting. Um, and also, just whilst I was looking at some stats, I seen that Malin this season has had thirty three shots from outside the box. Guess how many he scored? One against Hearts, and we got beat anyway. So <laughs> that <laughs> I don't mean to have a go at Malin at the end there, but I think it might be a benefit if we're getting into positions and the the ball's not getting hit and it's actually getting played into the box instead. But yeah. I'll, just... I'll, fin- I'll finish that with Alan because he does say please don't think I'm not happy he's back but I personally feel there are other areas that need strengthened mm-hmm. and possibly goes back to my point a few weeks ago as well I also want to say this is another player Hibs are bringing back why not look elsewhere slash forward and I'm guilty of being very hypocritical because I went pure loving on Twitter when Hibs announced Omionga despite mm-hmm. the fact that I raised the point that we I, I think I think Omionga is different because I think he shouldn't have went to you know, it's, it's obviously that shows now. Hindsight's wonderful, but he shouldn't have went to the club he was at in Belgium. Every Aye, single person that doesn't want the players, ex players back, could be buzzing when that ex player that they're all talking about but signs. Like, like I, th- I think it, he should have been here. It came in the summer. Um, uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And yeah, so it's, I, th- I see if it's more like he's been away for six months rather see, than see how he performs in it six months. But I would ex- fully expect him to be. A, t- a, a target signing in the summer yeah for permanent agree 100% agree but Hopefully he's got to, he's got to obviously earn that in the next six months but mm. like without well, a doubt he's talented enough to for that to be a certainty so uh, the general consensus is then that we're all excited and delighted that on on his back yeah well happy well on to other news that might get us excited and delighted well one of us anyway Josh Vela <laughs> is gone I'm guided he's away to Shrewsbury guided to join the the cum dog Right, well, fair point to him. I'm not going to sit here and slate him. It just didn't work. Um, I don't think you can really slate him. There's nothing to actually slate him about. Like, it's not as if he was... I can't pick out a game where he was actually really poor. He was just decidedly... I, I remember him doing one thing in a Hibs jersey, and it's when he pressed uh, against Hearts for Malin's goal. That's the one and only time I've ever seen him doing anything worth note. Gav, you've voiced that you're disappointed why I think he is a, there's a real high calibre of player there um, I think you know I, we were all really excited when we heard we were coming because he, he he's got a high pedigree for whatever reason um, it's not worked out and I think part of that was Heckenbottom signing him and trying to play him as a defensive midfielder when by we go by what Bolton fans have said um, when we signed him we kind of done our research he was more of a box to box midfielder, attacking playmaker. So Hecky's kind of thought, well, the Scottish game's not that bad. I don't need a Bartley. I'll play somebody like Vela there, and uh, that's a bit unfair on Vela because that's not his position, and in, and it's not worked out. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, it, it's obviously it's, it's getting, you know, he's born and raised in England. He's only ever played for Bolton. 
coming up to Scotland's a big move for him. I think for Moose, I don't know, but I, I'm guessing for some personal reasons it's maybe not worked out as well. But you know, I, best of luck to him. Um, I'm just a bit glad it never worked out because I really think there was a good player there. But I know I'm in the minority thinking that. Uh, I'll just throw something back at you there, um, just for conversational sake. Like Halberg, it's not his position, but he's he's shown that he's putting everything into it. He's come out and said he'll put everything into that. If that's where we want to play, then we'll play it. And he's shown that he's got good ability and versatility player. Is that an example of someday how we're talking about Omionga, like really buys into a club and really wants everything for a club? Josh Feller didn't do that. Potentially, no. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, think that's a good point. I don't think he showed that in any game the commitment, and I think that's probably why fans got on his back straight away, because he never had that that initial connection. For one reason or another, it's just not worked. But he certainly goes with the best wishes of us here at Hibs Talk. Yep, and um, I hope he's. I hope he's. Uh, well, I've no doubt his style will be absolutely fine now for playing with Shrewsbury. <laughs> <laughs> um, dig dig. Other uh, club, club class in and also can they? <laughs> but anyway. Other other rumours, uh, well, no, no rumours, Camberry, uh, Lech Poznan coming back in with a second bid. Apparently Hibs have got a £2 million release clause in his contract, which they're not willing to meet and will not accept if they don't meet it. Um, sort of going hand in hand with uh, these McNulty rumours that have came up again. Camberry stay, go. Uh, personally, I'd rather Camberry than McNulty. Uh, you look at McNulty... Since uh, since he left Hibs, I think he's got three goals at, um, in forty five games or something. Uh, two for Sunderland and w- uh, one someone else. It's like you know he's he's not got a good goal scoring record recently. He started well for Hibs and then stopped scoring goals. And I mean we can kind of we kind of done a lot a big talk about you know the lack of service to the forwards. But even then he wasn't scoring goals towards the end of it. So I would be a bit. I, w- I wouldn't be as excited I'd be like like that guy is, uh, was like with Omionga I'd be like that with McNulty I'd be a bit sceptical um, and I'd be a bit worried that McNulty is a fox in the box and I think Dodge is best being a fox in the box although he's big he's not really that he's not really a target man he's, I think it's just he's tall um, so I would be worried that they're too similar I think Flo offers something different so yeah I'd definitely rather have Flo yeah I'm, I'm probably in the same boat as you I'd, but I just think Flo will will go it's worrying because I don't know if he's going. I, I mean, eighteen months on his deal. Same with uh, Boyle, who's been linked to rumours. It's like you got to get the two of them on new deals. Um, otherwise, you know, we get to the situation like we were with McGinn, where it's twelve months in his contract, and you know, clubs can start put lowballing us. So, I think he'll want to go as well, Flo. If if he's going to get no play up top with Dodge, mm. no, if like obviously he was at left. Again, there, and I think he's said that he'd rather play up top way someday. So if he's playing in a position that he's he doesn't enjoy, and then picking up stick off the back, it was but came at. And he was in the uh, Al- was it Albania squad. Yeah, he yeah. So he's got a taste for international football. And that paperwork's see- all been confirmed now as well. Aye. So the next time they they have a game, he can he can play for them. So he he'll, he'll want to be you know playing well and putting himself in contention and starting for Albania and not just getting the call up and just sort of being an odd player he wants to he'll have a taster of that and he'll want to continue that mm-hmm. so so if we're picking one over the other Canberry for both. personally Canberry yeah I would, I would pick Canberry as well I'll go back Nelly just to be just to be <laughs> different <laughs> now on to the fun part Dundee United 2 Hibernian 2 um, so obviously you guys were at the game I wasn't at the game, which is where the inspiration for me to sit in the comfy seat has come from. I've just enjoyed a day off and now we're having to write all the notes, bro. But it's been great. So if I don't go to games, I get to sit in that seat? Potentially, if you're up for it, aye. Might just sack the next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously team was announced and it was... Obviously the the, the big the biggie in there was Whitaker. Um, what, was your, what was your thoughts initially when the team was announced? In terms of how you thought it was going to set up because the initi- the addition of Whitaker sort of opened up maybe two, three different ways that we could set up. I, I kind of felt it was going to be Whitaker in midfield. Um, that was my initial thoughts of it. Um, I thought it might have been more of a, a 4-3-3 rather than a 4-2-3-1, which it kind of ended up being. Um, but, yeah, I just... I was a bit sceptical in terms of, you know, the fact that he's 36 and... That we're getting to a situation don't get me wrong Whitaker's a, a, a very talented player but the the fact that we're having to rely on a 36 year old to solve our position when that's not even his natural position is quite worrying rather than you know we're what 20 
days into the transfer window, if that's a position, such a problem position, why is it something not being sorted sooner? I know, you, I know, you probably will get the right player in, but that was my kind of worry from that. Seeing that, yeah. Did you even need to play a defensive midfielder against Sunday United? I think it's something we've needed. Yeah. So I, but I, I, I just don't think when you're playing. I don't think Dundee United are that good. I'll be honest. Like I, they're overhyped. Um, I thought they were like. I'll get into it more later. But I thought they were extremely poor yesterday. Yeah, I just I didn't see it. Like mm. fair enough, they're winning the championship. But I, well, I can't absolutely can't laugh. Fair play. It's probably not the easiest thing to do. But there's not all, like, that good teams in that championship this season. And I just don't think that a defensive midfielder is needed every game. I, I don't. Why do you need a spoiler in there for against a team like that who aren't going to? Aren't gonna go 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 at you? They didn't yesterday, so I just mm. don't think. I just think but it shows did, but a bit. But did they how not go because of Whitaker? I mean, I I, I, we we, this the match sports not commit to looking at stats. But, but we we were actually in the pub when Whitaker we got announced. Mm. Obviously, we had a chat about it, and that we were actually all all right with it, though, weren't we? There was nobody like, oh, can I believe I'm playing Whitaker. It was, it was seen as right. Okay, I see what he's doing there. Mm. But no. it, it was it was. We're going to come back to this more. I know because I've seen the listeners' questions, but so I'll, I'll go into this more. But it was more. It kind of got me thinking about the squad rather than actually about the the actual selection. But yeah, we'll come back to that later on. So I we on at the game, um, started really well. Had the Camberry chance where he cut in off the left and was cleared off the line. And then a couple of minutes later, we go one 0 up with a counter attack. Marciano throws the ball out to uh, Scott Allen who drives maybe forty fifty yards. Switches it to Boyle. Boyle cuts inside. Does a lovely wee Scott Allen reverse look pass Dodge. Um, as Castro would say, that effing Dodge guy um, gets on the end of it and makes it 1 0. Just before going on to the actual goal itself, the performance of Scott Allen was analysed and criticised by a lot of people yesterday, but he played a pivotal part in both goals. Do you think the criticism that Allen's had is unwarranted, or do you think that? You know, there could be a lot of factors. Is he just trying too hard because of who it was against? You know, is he trying to prove a point? Is he getting kicked too much and he's and it's really affecting him? What what, what do you think? I think we play through Scott Allen, Scott Allen that many times and he tries to, to go forward and he tries to do stuff that other players maybe won't try. He doesn't do the safe option. But we moaned about players doing the safe option for how long? For well, the whole heck and bottom reign. So I think... A lot of the stuff that he does try won't work, but he's not going to be able to pull for a world they pass or or like that what that pass at Ibrox that everybody was rabbiting on about for a while, and do a do assist in that like he does if he doesn't try them, and I think a lot of it didn't work out, and I I thought he was poor, um the whole pretty much the whole game I know he played good part in two goals but you've got to accept and he's no exempt for criticism I think he deserves deserves point you do that he wasn't that good but another game oh that'll pop off and then we'll be talking about him setting up three or four and good passes and that so I think it's a credit to Scott Allen the fact that he's had a bad game and he's played a pivotal part in both goals yeah um, I think that's you know he did have a bad game I, th- I think you know I'm, uh, criticism wanted uh, you know you're going to criticise players if they don't have a good game and I think yesterday's an example of like say Omayonga was you know I'd been in a couple of days earlier and was on the bench I think that's an example where, or if Malin wasn't injured, Malin comes on because it's not working for Scott Allen. But we didn't have anybody on the bench that could kind of come on in that number ten position and work in that way. You know, you Dave, you kind of suggested whilst we're at the game, Halberg kind of maybe going further forward. But then you've got to compromise what he's doing for in the the deep line playmaker position. You've got to move out your whole midfield. So I think you know we didn't have anybody on the bench to come on from. So he played the whole game. It wasn't working out, but at the same time he still had to play the play a part in two goals. So credit to him for that. Good for Dodge to get back on the score sheet again after a wee drought. Aye, he needed it because I think once you've once you go on a run, I think he even said he sell. Like once you go on a run, you always say like a, a dry patch. So for it to be nipped in the bud quite relatively soon after, like it was pretty decent. Aye, he's hoping this is another start of another run. Double figures now in the January. A lot of twenty a goals lot of isn't that unrealistic. A lot of games coming up as yeah. well, so be good if he could be a bit more consistent yeah thought was the best finish that he's done as well like the other ones have been kind of he's been kind of criticised for sclaffs and toe pokes and tapping so it was a it was a well taken finish there, there seems to be this like unwritten rule in football and it, when it goes through a defender's legs nine times out of ten it ends up in the back of the net <laughs> um, right after that we have another counter attack Boyle breaks forward and feeds it through to Halberg 
2 0 should be game over. Not 2 0. He misses it. Why? Don't know. I am. Um, you have to ask Halberg. I mean, is uh, that's the the Hearts game was the same. He had a chance to, to make it. You know, two 0 and it would have been a different game. Um, but yeah, uh, he's he's you know, I a bit unfortunate. I don't, no, know. I don't think he gets into the position positions that often, does he? Or you've, no, you've named. <laughs> uh, he's maybe just not used to. It. He's maybe used to sitting at the back and panicking a wee bit. I don't know. No, I thought I don't he know. could have taken an extra touch. Yeah, I, 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 feel, I, feel, I thought he could have taken an extra touch forward, and then even. Maybe looked up for the the supporting run of Boyle, but um, but no, that's when you look at him reflection as well. Coming so soon after we after we scored, you could argue that we could have been three 0 up in the first twenty minutes with those two misses and a uh, and Dodge's goal. So then it gets to sort of not really much else happens in the first half, um, and then Jason Naismith out of nowhere kind of goes down, pulls up with what appeared to be a knee injury, mm-hmm. um. And I think that directly leads into the second goal because you can see that the defence are trying to reset. But then Porteous is dragged out of position. Hanlon's kind of pulled over the place and then it ends up with Lewis Stevenson trying to defend it on the penalty spot. Can you attribute that goal going in? Can you attribute blame to anyone in particular or is it just a combination of things that led to that, that led to Shanklin being in a position that he was in? Yeah, it's a combination of things. I do, I do think that Stevenson needs to be a bit stronger um, because Shankland wasn't mucking about right in him Mm -hmm. like and that that, obviously Marciano then coming out probably put Stevenson off he kind of falls at him and that after the buzz left Shankland's foot but uh, I think it's a combination of things but you kind of got to ask you know why was um, Stevenson bang in the middle the the pitch when you know he's meant to be the left back why you know the centre back's not there so you've kind of got to look at the whole he just gets drawn across when the ball slips through but too easily if you look at it from behind the goals when they were showing the replays on the telly you could see that Porteous was away out trying to close down the midfielder Hanlon's then trying to cover in at the back of him and then Stevenson's then trying to cover in at the back of him it's also so not it's been the first time we've lost a goal with Porteous charging out we've done the exact same at uh, Celtic Park um, and then they scored for it off the back it but when he was I mean when he was doing that the, the first six months of last season Milligan was sitting in front of that defence and dropping in any time he did go rushing out um, and then when had Bartley coming in and stuff like that um, so yeah, as well to do the same thing so I think that's maybe been a factor um, and you know this season we, we've not had somebody we've, we keep on talking about this defensive midfielder signing a defensive midfielder uh, but yeah I think that could be a, a play a part in that when you've got a centre back rushing out you want somebody to step in but it's good you know good credit, credit, credit to the Dundee players who Drew him out. The Dundee United players who drew him out in order to create that space for Shankland. Did not give them credit. There's also that other cliche in football that the the best time to score and the worst time to concede is bang on half time. Uh, so obviously Shankland scores in the 47th minute or something gives them a boost having not really been in the game. How important was it that we came out after half time flying and got the goal as early as we did? Yeah, it was it was really important, and the only thing that, that annoys me a wee bit about it is. The end of that first half, we were we were camped in our own half, um, which we weren't a lot of the game, but we kept putting it forward. And uh, ironically, about a minute before the score, I think Portis hoofs it up the park, and I was like, "Hoof!" I was like, "We always moan at Hearts in that," and he was like, "Oh, we're just getting it away." And I'm like, "No, but it's just coming straight back into us straight away. We're not getting out at all." And then they scored, um, and then second half we come out and we start obviously passing the ball, but we get the ball at the back. We then play it out to Canberra out wide or something. Why did we know with it then? Is it because it's no right before half time? We've got we then built a counter attack, but we played a bit more sensible. We didn't panic and then got a goal at it. And then you know to jump ahead, the Dundee United second goal comes from a panic clearance yep. that Dundee United then attacked from. Correct. So. so within within the sort of space of ten in game minutes, we had Naismith going down, Shanklin scoring, Boyle scoring, and then. 52nd minute Porteous goes off now I have made no bones about my love for Porteous I think he's brilliant I think he's the next one off the the production line that's going to make Hibs a lot of money but I do think he is now doing this sort of stuff too often he's now potentially injured himself through tackling now I know that you can't go into tackles half hearted you know if we've all played football to a certain level even as kids if you went into a tackle 60-40 you're going to get hurt more than if you go in 50-50 
is there is this something that just comes with Porteous's inexperience, given that he's still only what twenty twenty one? He's in his what third season as a regular. Is this something that will come with time and more experience? Or is this just the, the kind of player that is that he just maybe gets a, a wee rush of blood to the head and goes for it? Because you don't want to calm down his aggressive tendencies, but at the same time, you want to... We don't want to be missing him either through red cards or injuries. I've said to, to uh, boy at my work, I'd much rather he was at this side of the scale and you're ruining it in a wee bit than you're trying to get somebody who is quite weak and timid mm. to be a bit more aggressive it's probably easier to rein him in because through experience he'll get that um, I, I'll be completely honest with you I can't remember the tackle I've not seen it back um, so I'd, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that I paid that much attention to it at the time I just remember I'm going off with a knee I think it was one of these ones where he's went in harder than he probably should in an area of the park that he probably doesn't need to do it in yeah well that, if I watched the back then fair play mm. Did you, do you mind it? Uh, uh, only briefly from the game, but and like I say, I've not seen it back. Um, you know, speaking as my, from a you know, we all played at a high level. You know, <laughs> I, I was an unused sub once from Houston Red. I, I just worry that you know, obviously he was out for six months with an injury. So this time last year, um, I hope he's not done the same thing. You know, the scans apparently were getting done for him and Naismith today. Can I find out the extent probably tomorrow? And I, I, you worry that it could be something long term. Hopefully, it's not. Now, based on. The, the first goal <clears throat> excuse me how pivotal Boyle was in that the second goal Boyle scores a great hit for outside the box is he now our most important player? Yep. possibly no. I think he's our player of the season so far and Aye. he's not been here all season no, no. well he's matched his best ever goals tally already and he's only I think it was 7 starts 16 games in total 7 starts I, I, it's maybe a bit early to say most important player because I think that there's a lot of other important players in the squad now but yeah he's definitely up there and he's he's been tremendous and it's great to see you know obviously we were kind of we brought Middleton and think for the season thinking he could potentially be out for the season and he's came back so much earlier than we thought and he's hit the ground running so yeah great to see and, and you know it's great to see he's finally got that final product is that is he now starting to show what we have bemoaned for so long and that we've always said Boyle Love him, but his end product is hopeless. I mean, you look at the, you look at the the quality of so his his goal against Aberdeen, where he's he's dinked it over Lewis and then finished it. His two goals against Hearts, his goal there at the weekend. Um, is he now in the six months that he has been injured, managed to somehow? Where's he found this end product from? Where where is this now clinical Martin Boyle? coming from I don't know I think it'd be fascinating here like like, speak to him in an interview and can obviously those two injuries so close together what were you doing like whilst you were injured because he's done something whether it's watching tapes or something or you know maybe credit to people behind the scenes at HCC if they've been doing video analysis with him and stuff and giving him feedback on you know watching all his stuff back and like okay you get in the positions this is what you've got to do I don't know but he's been doing something yeah and I think it, it does help your confidence if he start doing stuff right and you like right. Ken Whit I'd pick up a bit of confidence for that back of that didn't you so yeah uh. so given given how he is how important he is to us now he's 26 he's an Australian international and he's got 18 months left on his contract where does that leave one him and two us in regards to a bid coming in because there's there's been rumours that um, Celtic have been watching him um, Lennon is well known to be a big fan of his is that something that could potentially happen I think it'll hit I think if Celtic showed some interest um, I think uh, do you think Boyle would go want I, to go I don't think he'd want to go but at the end of the day football's a short career and if you can make a hell of a lot more money and a guy that especially you know obviously I think he'd want to be loyal to Hibs because we'll, how faithful we've been through, through his injuries and stuff but at the same time it's a short career he's got a family and if you, you want to make all the money you can out of football so if he has an opportunity to go get more money then you'd, you'd probably think there's, he'd take it that's definitely the way he's playing there's definitely going to be interest mm. he's at like an absolute spark in a game like so he can just make something happen 
I think he's I think I would go as far as to say, and I never thought I would say this, but I think he's probably irreplaceable because I don't think we'd find somebody with that pace. And now he's got the end product. I think that'd be hard to. We I think we struggle to pick that up. I think that I'm desperate to see a headline. You know, Boyle gets re- reward for fine form. You know, classic football manager. Should line. just be doing that uh, now. But yeah, no, nah, should, should be, be getting that. You know, be add, add another two years onto his contract or something. Does the fact that he's an internationalist now actually help Hibs in this regard? Because if he goes to Celtic, he's not going to be playing every week. He'll be like Johnny Hayes, in and out, in and out, in and out. He's obviously, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but can he's potentially going to be playing at the Copa America mm-hmm. in the summer. You know, if he is going to be playing in Copa America, you know, in the summer, then surely you kind of want to, you know, stay here for another six months and then, you know, potentially do well and put yourself in the window for I have absolutely then, no doubt that he will be playing in that, like, right. as one of Australia's starters, if he keeps playing the way he's playing for Hibs. Yeah. I think he would maybe, you've got to, I would, I would be like, Mate, look at Dylan McGeoch, for example. He's getting got a Scotland call up and that. Everybody was raving about him. Goes down to Sunderland, doesn't he? A game. Can you imagine Dylan McGeoch getting in the Scotland squad now? Aye. No, and I, I think you're going to be raging when it happens. No chance. <laughs> He's no chance. Well, to to wrap up on the game, then we'll look at the the Dundee United second goal again. It's not one thing. It's a few things. Um, you know, balls played down, played down the left, and David Gray kind of half arse is a clearance um, he's like losing his balance and stuff when he kinda, and it's kind of like a panic of clearance whilst he's falling over unfortunately mm. so aye and then it, it comes to the ball gets played into um, a Perry who sends Whitaker outside and he almost has to pay to get back in I was going to say sent him for a pie but there's <laughs> no hope food so he never sent him for a pie and then cuts inside for maybe 25 yards on the angle and hits a low curled shot it ends up in the back of the net now for me there's two main aspects that, that go wrong there one Whitaker and two Marciano what do, what do you guys think do you think that we should be doing they should be doing better in both is one more at fault than the other it's hard to say who's at fault more but cause, but you know looking at them I think you know Whitaker too easily the guy gets away from him gets the space and then has a lot of time to hit the shot uh, and then the goalkeeper like we were kind of watching the highlights back before, as if he's, as if because he doesn't judge the curl, curl, uh, curl right on it, and he thinks it's uh, going out for a corner, and kind of pulls away at the last minute, and then it kind of goes in. So yeah, I think he's maybe just mis- misjudged that, unfortunately. So I, when you look at it from a Dundee United point of view, they will be looking at the mistake that Hibs made. I think when you look at it from the attacking point of view, it's actually quite a good goal, but. I think there's even more a combination of errors than the first one, like like you say, Craig, with the with the grey, with the wicker, than the Marciano. I think we could have done a bit better in all these yep. situations, but I think way that one, I'd hold my hands up and go actually a pretty decent goal, rather than write it off. Not everyone needs to be somebody's fault. Fair enough. But it was David Gray's fault, Wicker's <laughs> fault, and Marciano's fault. <laughs> so that now gives us a replay a week on Tuesday mm. at Easter Road. Aye. Personally, I think we'll tuck them away. No, no hesitation whatsoever. I think we'll. I, I thought, like as you said, Dave. I thought they were very poor yesterday. Um, they didn't really offer anything to me. I didn't see anything from them that. I, I worry though that you know, say, say if you were listening to the Dundee fan podcast and their view on it, I think they would be going. We showed Hibs too much respect at Easter Road. We've got to go up for them more. Because I think they did show us quite a lot of respect, especially the fact that they were at home. But at the same time, you know, the current argument could be said we're playing a defensive midfielder. Dave, you're saying we shouldn't be. Maybe we showed them too much respect as well. I know it sounds silly when there were four goals in the game, but still, maybe a bit of respect shown too much shown. shown. I think that it's got the potential. Well, I don't think it's out with the realms of possibility that they, they do beat us. But I'm really confident that we will we will beat them. Fair enough. But I think on their day, they probably will have. They have got the, they have got a chance. Hopefully, it's, hopefully, Shanklin's is uh, Celtic by next Tuesday. Anyway, <laughs> <He's not> good <laughs> enough. <laughs> right for something different. Gav usually gets the um, Hibs taxi board out, and we'll do a quiz, and it's literally fastest finger first. Oi oi! <laughs> but we'll do something different this week because it's my shot. Um, I've got eight questions and I'm just going to go down the list and ask them and I'll give you about 10, 10 seconds or so so it's a quiz about the 2010s 
couple of the questions are quite obscure. Some of them easy. A couple of sh- couple of couple of dark horses in there. So yeah. trying to upstage me I writing his own quiz. Yeah. Also, didn't he say, "Oh, this is an easy one." Before it. Oh, no, 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 Any of the ones I struggle with, and I get made look stupid because I've not got the easy one. Right, question one. Right. Who scored Hibbs' first goal of the 2010s? So, Jesus. all the way back in 2010, who scored it? Complete guess. <sighs> who played that? Was John, bear in mind, that was John Hughes' Aye, I, I, full I, season. Right. I've, I've got, I've got uh, players come to mind, but uh, you, you've got to make a guess um, of who it could be. But yeah. Done. Go. Right, question two. Who was in goals for Hibs in the six all game with Motherwell? Oh, that, that might be. Oh. It's probably not this person, but yeah, I'm going to go for I'm, it. I'm doing this as well. Am I right in saying that's the time when we had like three goalkeepers? I've had John Hughes' famous goalkeeping school, eh? Aye, yeah, I went for aye, so yeah. I, I might have that. Right. Who did Hibs sign to replace Anthony Stokes after he was sold to Celtic? Oh my god, aye. The player that I no, 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 no give it away. Sorry. Right. Who made the most appearances overall in the 2012-2013 season? Oh. Ooh. Who was the manager that season? Pat Fenlon. What do you mean that that season? How you can of remember that cup final squad? <laughs> no, that no, that's the se- that was the, this is the season after the season after. So the yep. Celtic Cup final. Celtic so Cup final season. So Griffiths with nine on his back rather than twenty eight on his back. There shouldn't be a single one of them survived for the season before, but oh well. <laughs> okay. Question yeah. five. Who was the Hibs player that went to Dundee in the swap deal for Martin Boyle? Oh. Huh. I thought that was quite an easy one, to be fair. Yeah, um, I <laughs> that's fine, I've got that. <laughs> Gav's struggling. I am struggling? Yeah. You what, really what are not knowledgeable. I'm not telling you. <laughs> Actually, I had your ten seconds. Question six. <laughs> Damn. No, screw him. No. Question six. Just put the, any, anything. Just because he's a former up. host. Nah, former host. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you mm-hmm. I done there. Right. Put Who received <laughs> the most yellow cards in the league in the 2015 2016 season? So, no necessarily a Hibs player. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, obviously. Oh, aye, so I so <laughs> so have to Who received the most yellow cards in the 2015 2016 season? 2015 2016. Now, there is a player who got more. Overall, uh huh. But I'm looking just the, the league. league. Yep. Right. Okay. And That's it's fine. not who you think it is. Oh, okay. You wrote Bartley, didn't you? I did write. <laughs> Bartley's overall, but not in the league. It's quite a. I. I don't think. I don't think either. He's. will get this one. Okay. I think. I think I will. I think I've got this right. Number seven. Uh huh. Right. So in terms of all the players that featured in the Scottish Cup final for Hibs add up the say. total sum of their squad numbers but right, you're going to pause it for this no you, so you, it's just are you scud just write a number I uh, just write a number <laughs> I'll, I'll, write I'll, I'll take right. to the closest I'll take to the closest 10 yep so you had some wild numbers bear in mind the highest it featured was 35 yeah and the lowest it features was 2 and that, is it including the three subs or Included, all the subs? not including the three, just the three subs. Just the three so subs. So not the not the f- not the other four that didn't make it off the bench. Craig, see so behind that thing on the shelf there. There's a thing with the the squad uh, that played. Go and hand it over. Nope. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know. Uh, I would say don't go too high. It's no unbelievably high. Didn't you start taking okay. him close right. at waving your phone <laughs> Right. Right. Finally, question eight. Who scored the final goal for Hibs under Neil Lennon? So Neil Lennon's last goal as Hibs manager. So the player, and I'll give you a bonus point if you can tell me where and who it was against. Do you get an extra bonus point to tell you what minute? <laughs> Fuck. That, that's, Did that's, I just win? Aye, aye, that, that'd be, aye that'd, be a, that'd be a game over scenario. Right. That's wrong. Wait, no. He's missed that game now. What do you mean he... The hell was his last game? Well, his last game was Motherwell. Yeah, one But we never, we never scored. scored that no, game. we got beat one, though. And that was the that winter was the break. Port- that was the game that Portis got injured, I'm yep. sure. So, so, it was, so it was the game before the winter break? <laughs> I have no idea. 
Might yeah. be. So there's 11 teams. <laughs> there are 10 teams because no us and then no Motherwell. So 1 in 10 chance. Oh, wait now. Oh. Oh, yes. No. No, I was too... Nah. Cause, no I was, idea. I've written a I was thinking of the Kilmarnock game when he got suspended, but he was at the stands for a while and he was back in the stands for that Motherwell game, so can he have been that? So that probably rules out Kilmarnock. Can it rules out Motherwell? Come on, Gav. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this. Uh, wouldn't, it been, wouldn't it be Rangers or Dundee because we had them quite soon under Hecke? <clears throat> yeah, oh, maybe it was. The 4-2 game against... Was it one of them? No, 4-2 was Hecke. Aye. But was it, was it one of Rangers or yeah. Dundee? Yes. Oh, shite. Right, yeah, okay. which one you go for? I'll go for the other one. Just, just, just I'll go for Dundee, you go for Rangers. Right. Who scored against Rangers? Who scored against Rangers? Who scored against Dundee? I'm fucking flow. Why not? Right. Okay. Right, I'm going to go. I'm sure I'll get pulled up on the accuracy of these questions, but I did take every single answer from either A, my memory, or B, Wikipedia. Oh, I so think I'll get one out, oh, of ten, out of eight. Oh my god. See if it's this. <laughs> Right, okay. Don't give away, Craig. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to see. You'll get him excited. Nine, he scored. No. Is it no that? No. No, it's Nine not that. that goal. <laughs> that was so, that 3 0 game that. against Dundee. How many guesses are you getting? That was at the start of the season. I can't even mind, Steve. Uh, Craig, right. shut up, Stephen. Right, right are we ready? Stephen. Yeah. Right, question one. Who scored Hibs first? So you'll need to tally it yourself as yeah. well. Right. Who scored Hibs <laughs> first goal? Tally we many. swap sheets. <laughs> Nah, it's fine. Nah, I just mark your own. Right. Liam Miller. No, actually, I swap, so you kind of change the answer. I'm not going to change the answer. Put your rubber down. I put it I put it on the table. Oh, my God. Right, okay. <laughs> put, put yours down. I, I think I've got one out of eight. Right, right. who scored Hibs' first goal of the 2010s? I went Liam Miller. I went John Rankin. Anthony Stokes. Damn. Against Hearts. He was shy. Question two. Who was in goals for Hibs in the 6-6 six, six game versus Motherwell? I went Graham Smith. I went Brown. Graham Smith. Yes. Good. Well done, Dave. Who did Hibs sign to replace Anthony Stokes after he was sold to Celtic? Trackis. Trackies. Nope. I would. Yeah, it was. It's Daryl Duffy. No, I was saying Trackis. Trackis was signed to replace Duffy. No, Trackis. I Duffy, No, Duffy got injured straight away. Because Daryl Duffy. Trackis on no, 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 no. No, we didn't. Well, tra- 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 sorry, tra- Trackis trial. on trial. And then he. Daryl Duffy said, signed the day that Stokes left. Stokes went out the door. Oh, Daryl Duffy came in. One. Right, well, trackies. We both said trackies. Aye. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it. No, no, it, no, 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 it's fine. I'll, it's I'll the same give window. It. Striker. Aye, I'll give it. Doesn't matter. We both got it wrong anyway. So. No. All right, right. All right. Question four: Who made the most appearances in the 2012-2013 season? Ben Williams. McPick. Ben Williams. Yes. Goal. By, by virtue of one. Over who? Who do you think? James McPick. Lee Griffiths. Ah, oh, right. Question five. Who was the Hibs player that went to Dundee in the swap deal for Martin Boyle? Simon Murray. Mm, no, that was no. the Scott Allen. Because Simon Murray one. signed for Hibs after. You think you get you're thinking of Scott Allen and, and Scott Bain. Scott Bain. Oh, what was, what was the question? Martin Boyle. Martin Boyle. I I ah. went I went for Kevin Thompson. Alex Harris. Ah. Would never have got that. I just read heard that wrong and thought it was really easy. Right, question six. Who received the most yellow cards in the league in the 2015-2016 season? I went for Fontaine. I went for Fivey. Liam Henderson. Really? Aye. Liam Henderson got the most bookings in the league. Got eight. Wow. Uh, we're well good at this. I haven't got one right yet. Add up the total sum of players' numbers who appeared <laughs> for Hibs in the 2016 Scottish Cup final. I'm going to say it in a Darts voice. <laughs> 140. <laughs> I, I went for 134. 134? Aye. And you went for 140. Aye. Aye. Two two four. I had two or four, and then so you said didn't he go too high? By virtue, no, I was, I was, I was too high. That. Uh, Is this got a wee bit higher? Right, no. So I win, and I knew that you would have been looking. So I thought if you went, if he see, you <laughs> see me pushing it higher. Right now, final question: Who scored the final goal for Hibernian under Neil Lennon? So I went for McLaren. I just against went Dundee. For, I just went for Boyle. Nope. The venue, Ibrox. The team, Rangers. The assist, Sean Mackey. The goal scorer, Darren McGregor. Darren McGregor. Right enough. One nil Ibrox. One all. I won all. I was equaliser. I yep. one all. I won all Ibrox. Damn. Nice last goal. Jeez. Mm. Good quiz. 
that's true. So I, it's I, amazing I, what Wikipedia and your own knowledge. You try to say with your knowledge. No, because I thought like I just I was to be fair, you're gonna know them because you thought of them. If I could ask you questions and I would have fucking you wouldn't get in enough. Well you can do the quiz next time then. Yeah, okay. I got three out of eight, Dave. I don't know if I can be bored. Uh two. Two okay. out of eight. Two. How do you get three? Track is Ben Williams and Craig's. Uh, ben, ben Williams, uh, ben Williams won it for you. So let us know how you done with Craig's quiz and if he's beat us and what he's got out of eight. Oh football about is easy, mate. And like I say, if it's an absolute crock of shite. <laughs> that was good I enjoyed that yeah it was quite good to be fair um, I, I, credit to you for putting in the effort and making your own quiz rather than just using a video reading games reading cards and, uh, that and then uh, uh, acting like you've done well quizzes. yeah so it's my turn to play devil's advocate now and go for room 1902 now I think Dave you're generally the the room 1902-er Oh, first of all, if anybody's not aware, Room 1902 basically is where, similar to Room 101, when Hibs banished the Scottish Cup drought, we won it, it went in Room 1902. So that was it. So this is this is our way of paying homage to... Stuff Sco- in football. Stuff in football, yep. Stuff in football that you would like to see consigned to the bin forever. Yeah. Now, Dave, because you are the one who usually gets your suggestions going in Room 1902, uh-huh. I'll let Gav go first. Okay, so mine is completely football related. I promise. Um, so that means it's not going to be totally football related. We'll see. Um, so I've had a lovely football orientated day today. I was at the press conference earlier on. You know, at HCC football hubs talking about football podcast tonight talking about football. So I left the press conference and you know my nice football day. It's completely football related. And I thought, you know what, I'll go for a McDonald's because I've not had a McDonald's in ages. So I go in, I'm having a nice set. I was like, oh, I ordered my McDonald's. And then, you know, you get to the drink bit and you're like, right, I'm not a big fan of their fizzy juices. You know, like, because it's, you know, it's syrup and then soda and syrup and soda. It just, I did like for the fizzy juice for McDonald's. You're not going to tell me the milk she, milkshake so, wasn't working. No, so it was. So I got, I got the milkshake. Right. Have you tried to drink a milkshake uh, while a paper straw? This way. <laughs> <laughs> a paper straw. Paper straw. Are you like so? A ma room nineteen o two is the fact that McDonald's are a billion dollar company, and the best solution they've cut is great that they're trying to do something good for the environment. But the best solution they come up can come up with is a paper straw that doesn't work, doesn't function properly. Yeah. Nah, no having it. So McDonald's and paper straws. Is, it has to go in room 1902 because I was having a nice football day and it was ruined by a paper straw I'll give you that because I now feel like when I get uh, even an iron brew from McDonald's because I, I like my food I do like a McDonald's and just, just, just while we're on the really subject good. just while we're on the subject then what is your what is your go-to your go-to meal in McDonald's large Big Mac meal with a double cheeseburger chaser standard usually large Big Mac as well but I do like a big tasty but I just I seen it today and I was, it was like when you you got to the meal it was like seven quid or something and I was like no nah. uh, so I went for a quarter pound of the day which quite like a quarter pound but Big Mac's my usual go to here's a wee tactic for your McDonald's right so you say you at the drive through mm-hmm. and then they say you do you like a bag and then obviously when you say aye they fire that 5p on say no and they give you a bag anyway they give you a bag anyway the one day. Why, why are you getting charged 5p for a paper bag I thought That's it was just plastic bags it's a company choice right. we're the same in our work our, ba- our bags are paper but, but anyway days. yeah so that's that so that, that kind of had a nice football day ruined by a paper straw so paper straws in room 19 will do aye. aye I'll Fair go with that as an aside to the whole McDonald's meal thing I'm the opposite for you I didn't go for the burger I'll go for a plain chicken legend oh get some chilli sauce oh spread the chilli sauce on it double cheeseburger chaser obviously yeah and 20 nuggets and twenty nuggets. And twenty nuggets. Wow, yeah. fat bastard. Uh, no, <laughs> I was even like, it comes to, when it comes to McDonald's, no expenses spared, no food is wasted. Really? I, I have to, I, I can't have. Do you know what's really good? They've got their their cheesy bites. That they're, they're really they're like good. a share and, box, eh? And uh, you can get you can get twenty of them, or you can get four. Uh, I may have got four of the day as well. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're getting rid of them. They're they're they're, they're limited time, which I think is ridiculous. But that. It, what that does is that brings back demand so then they come back then folk are like oh my god geez, like, back. just like the big taste yeah yes only a and time of year. that's been particularly I keep talking about McDonald's you know, and right before I've had my dinner today so I could honestly oh, do a whole no. podcast on food <laughs> um, do you know what I start a food podcast 
Might do. Yeah. Yeah. For the equipment, why not? Yeah, I'd quite like I'd quite like that. But they've obviously the app they know. Mm. You're getting like keep starting the day our Big Mac wasn't it an MP, but the other day you were getting like free milkshakes and free I did coffees. not know about this. Yes, yeah, so if you get like that up in January, they were doing like a free hang all the time. Anyway, move just, on. Uh, just as just to just to put it out there, we are not sp- sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> if they want to sponsor us, we are open <laughs> yeah. to suggestions about hipstockpodcast at gmail dot com. And if Burger, <laughs> if Burger King want to sponsor us, I'm quite happy to say that McDonald's is shite. Yeah, but I love McDonald's. Okay. Right, just before we move on, you can only pick one Burger King or McDonald's. Burger, what are you going uh, for? And why? McDonald's. McDonald's. McDonald's really? Oh, nah, I, I, Burger, King. I, 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 Burger King. I feel funny after eating it. I just uh, yeah. don't know what it is. Dave, um, what are you chucking in room nineteen oh two? So TV companies, again, no, they're already putting them in, but this is for a completely different reason. Because I was thinking to myself, Ken, what I've not seen in ages, and the reason I've not seen it is because when it happens, they turn it away. A streaker. <laughs> <laughs> How much fun! Was a streaker at the football? You see a streaker on the telly, and that. I know it was mainly always guys, and that. I mean, that one at the Champions League final. Aye. That last they done it for promo things. But I always thought it was funny. Like it kind of put a wee bit of lightheartedness on the situation, and that. So, my, I, I didn't. I'm no. I actually looked it up as to see why they didn't do it, but then I was, I seen that somebody got hey, put on the six offenders register for well, being a streaker. So that's not good. <laughs> that's the thing that you get like streakers. Like I remember the last one I seen was Scotland Qatar. Uh, at Easter Road so I was there with Alfie must have been I don't know maybe 5 or 6 at the time Yeah. and he still talks about it to this day he was like dad remember that time that man had his willy out and he was running the pitch <laughs> but then there's also quite a, a creepy side to it that <clears throat> they're getting bollock naked ah it's weird and running about yeah. uh, that's what pitch. I said to his other I was like I've got a really weird that's thing to but I think like <laughs> the, the fact that the, the reason that they don't put the cameras on them is because if you know, if you put the cameras on you're them, encouraging they're encouraging it. Yeah, they're getting like your five minutes fame. Yeah. Not and only that, you're showing the uh, cock and balls on <laughs> like Aye, TV like for the watershed. Men. But my, my issue with them, like well, you hit the nail on the head, I think recently nobody just does it for the funny anymore. They've always got a message. You know, like the Champions League final, it's always you know a, a, a way to try and. Uh, put forward their political agenda yeah. and that that kind of we've got enough that. problems just the road if you're just going to get your boss out get your boss out <laughs> then you get your boss and your political you know trying to be better than everybody else uh, bye that's mine it's, uh, you've won this week like uh, just, so I think it's a pretty I was going to say based on what you said I was going to play devil's advocate and put it on Twitter and see what got the most votes but no McDonald's paper straws can go firmly in room 1902 because they are at the moment the biggest pain in the arse when it comes to eating other than Piers Morgan I love Piers Morgan how does no. Piers Morgan affect your eating because he bangs on about vegans and the vegan steak bake and vegan sausage roll and well, he's, nice just, he's just an arse I, I personally think he's playing a, I think to an extent he's playing a character cause I know because this have you seen him crying over the last week about Harry and Meghan no, God, we're not talking about unbelievable. We're not talking about the Royals. <laughs> Believe that. That's that, 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 that for your podcast. <laughs> 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 so a quick um, preview on Hamilton. Hamilton currently sitting eleventh in the Premiership, um, just above the uh, uh, whoever it is that's bottom in the league. I can't remember. Hearts, <laughs> hearts, <laughs> glorious hearts. Um, <laughs> Been a bit of a bogey team for us in the last few years, um, but we, recently we seem to be on a, a decent run of form against them. Four wins in the last five. Um, do you see us picking up an, an easy, an easy three points on Wednesday? Aye, and who cares if we didn't? Because then at least they're further away from heart. <laughs> <laughs> so we're lining. That's the way I'll be looking at it. I'll come out of that match and then I'll text my hearts mates. Gone. Get that up, you. We done them a wee favour. Uh, it's almost no lose, eh? Aye, nah, I want to win, obviously, but if we didn't win, then haha. Ha, right, let's let's not turn into these like Celtic and Rangers fans that are mere delighted about the other team losing than yeah. about the rain nah, team winning. E- nah, I, I, obviously, I won't be, but equally, I will be. Aye, uh, that, that's a tough one because I want to be really confident because, like I said, we've had a few good results against them in the past. You know, like six 0 and things like that. Like last, it was the last season the six 0 game, uh, and then the season before, Canberra uh, scored these. It's hat trick, so them, yeah. yeah, we've had some good results at home against them. But I mean, I'm like looking at their, their last five games. I mean, they beat Edinburgh City five nil um, in the cup at the weekend, and then Motherwell at home to them would be quite confident to getting a win because Motherwell are flying, and they beat Motherwell at Motherwell two one. So they 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 can you know, they, and I guess that's two wins in the trot as well. So I don't want to write them off completely, but I'd be confident they're getting a result. 
Ken what the Ken what Hamilton are like. Hamilton are like that. Ken when you get that wee nippy bit of skin on your yeah. finger, mm. and you can it's you're like, oh, fuck, I need to get rid of it. I need to get rid of it. But you can't, and you just leave it, and then eventually you get rid of it. That's what Hamilton are like. They're that wee nippy bit that they're always, they're they're never gone anywhere. They're always got to be in and about, and if they go away for a wee while, they're always got to pop back up. See, I, I think if once they go down, they'll be down for a while. Because I think like Falkirk, like Sunderland, <laughs> like Sunderland as well. Like I just think they're hanging on for that long, and then when you go, mm. that'll be them. And then, so I, I compare that like, because I think Kilmarnock used to be like Mid- Middlesbrough. I used to call Middlesbrough <laughs> like the Kilmarnock of the North. Aye, the two of them were the same. They're just always that team that were like Kilmarnock used to always just be like eighth. Middlesbrough you should always be like fourteenth, and then Middlesbrough fucked off. And I didn't even like English football. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but uh, anyway, next question. <laughs> so <laughs> quick question. prediction. Um, I think we'll win comfortably. I think we'll win two 0 Um, so I'll go three one. Right, we put out a tweet um and a post on Facebook just asking for any questions that you had. Uh, one that we have uh, came in from Paul Kane on Twitter so it says do Hibs need to be more ruthless in our approach to games like yesterday after scoring the first goal we seem to be content in possession and knocking it about rather than going for more goals do you think we have the players to be ruthless in attack it was a criticism of Sunderland fans for Jack Ross trying to sit on Leeds and it, there has been a bit of a pattern in that um, unfortunately so it does, I, do a bit, I do worry a bit about that but hopefully that gets ironed out once he's got his own his own squad I don't think we've got that killer streak, that kind of that aggression to put teams to bed. I think we'll, I think we'll take a lead and then sit and then probably try and break and counter teams. I think that'll be the pattern. But when you look at the two goals yesterday, they did come one way or another from a, a counter attack. Yeah. So, okay, the next one is from <laughs> this ain't no disco. Um, if Jack Ross is to rebuild the team in the summer, realistically, what does he need to do to get Hibs challenging for third? A whole new defence. Like it's, I think it's ridiculous the fact that like we were looking in the last summer and we we're thinking right, okay, we've got James coming in at right back, we've got Jackson coming in to kind of challenge Hanlon. Porteous is a man. Sean Mackey's coming through. Sean Mackey's coming through, uh, and then obviously we're saying Naismith, and we're thinking right, okay, James can play left back, so you know maybe that's an option. There's, do so you think Naismith, Porteous, Jackson, and um, James? There's a back four. James wasn't even on the bench yesterday. Gray's getting in ahead of him. A 36 year old in Whitaker's playing in midfield ahead of him when he's played in midfield, defensive midfield for Yeovil. Uh, Jackson looks like he's away. So the fact that you look at the age of the defence, you know, 30, uh, you know, obviously Porch is young and you've got like 30, 31 or whatever it is, and then 32 for Stevenson, 36 for Whitaker. We need to completely re- rebuild the defence and it, we shouldn't be bringing them all, like four defenders in the winner, which is what we're going to have to do. Yep. So yeah, we went about that. No, you're right. You're spot on. He's we've got another massive window we keep having big windows and having to bring in loads of players at the one time and but this one needs to be to be right well like the whole I was going to say we I never done any of it but the whole recruitment team need to need to realise that they had a shocker mm. that last one and it doesn't it needs to be better and there will be pressure on them yeah and, and we, we can kind of say oh you know I think like all oh, oh, hecky signings and that we don't know which ones were hecky signings and which ones weren't Matthew and the team and stuff yeah that's but, what I'm saying but, but it's a collective team effort yeah. so that I think and you math, I mean, credit to Matthew you know kind of when he spoke about it he has kind of says you know taking ownership of it and stuff and says they've done, got things wrong but you know seeing Vela come and go for nothing um, is crazy so yeah it's just kind of that's kind of worrying and hopefully we'll have a better tra- transfer window I, I don't see major overhauls in this January I think this January will kind of be getting bits and pieces in to kind of see us through and then it'll probably be a big <laughs> overhaul in the <laughs> summer <laughs> bits and pieces yeah. I didn't get that. Oh, you got that yeah I got that, I got that as well uh, just in case I knew you did but I didn't I was dancing away thinking that you did yeah. uh, Dave Thompson on Facebook we've kind of covered this already but uh, Louis at fought for the first goal got out muscled Gray should have went long or out for a throw for the second goal yeah. Wits caught flat footed and Rocky thought it was going mild. I would like to see a rebuild with the defence basically just exactly what you said guys. Very couple, much of, me, Dave. couple of young full backs and a new centre half time for the next generation yep yeah, you know they've, they've been tremen- tremendous servants, and I think there's nothing wrong with having them as even like second choice defence. But the fact is that the defence, we ended the game with uh, 
Gray, McGregor, Hanlon, Stevenson, still, you know, four uh, years later. Two of them have just got four year deals, mate, so you used to it. <laughs> Next one uh, is from Terry Callender. So, do you think if Camberry stopped all his fancy tricks and moaning when he's not ready for a touch, he would be a better player? And with these transfer rumours about him, do you start? Do you think he's starting to think he's bigger than the club? I, I, I get quite annoyed at that, if I'm honest. Um, I think, wh- why should players not do tricks and flicks? That it's, Football's meant to be exciting. I think in this country we coach that out of players. I'll give, I'll give you a name, David Templeton. Yes, he's been in luck with injuries, but he came through, you know, natural talent. We coach him and coach him and coach him just to do the basics. And, well, not us, but Scottish football and he's shite. So I think, no, nah, you know, okay, Kimberley's a striker, but yeah, uh, football's meant to be an exciting game. Why get rid of tri- things like tricks and flicks? I, uh, sorry, no. He needs to learn, when, like he was doing it yesterday at 1 0. I think if he's in a better team, you know, other players pick up on that sort of stuff. So, so nah, I don't have a problem with that at all. I d- My I d- own d- opinion, though. Yeah, I don't mind it to a certain extent. I just think pick and choose when you do it. Mm-hmm. He'd done it, I can't even mind what game it was, a couple of games ago, and he'd done it like twice in a row, and it didn't work, and we were, everyone was like, groaning or running about. And uh, we gave the ball away in a stupid position. But I there's been times the where he does it in the park. But, but he done it at Parkhead and it came off. Yeah, no, and, but and, that's you know, what Boyle had a chance for that. So, so why not? Why not try it? it? What's the difference between that and Scott Allen playing a ball into the box that gets intercepted? Oh, you're arguing with somebody that agrees with you. Or Malin that hits it for distance. Yep, I agree. Again, that thing you didn't get a, like a good moment in a game if somebody doesn't do something crazy. Nah, so do it more flow if you ask me. More flex. <laughs> Um, I think the the other couple of questions we've kind of covered Keith Roberts and what are your thoughts on clubs apparently looking to get Martin Boyle um, do you yeah, think, he would, that, do you think he would leave in this window or possibly next I think we've if, if he was to go I'd imagine it would be next window but hopefully not after a, Give good, him Copa, a good Copa America where we still get a decent decent whack for yeah. him as well I would imagine put another year on his deal now then and get more money in the summer yeah. but like play yourself in a move mate and we'll get money out of it yeah. sign there your day is as a favour and you a favour yeah and then we've got Callum Brown. Do we look to make loan signings to secure a top finish, top six finish at least, then rebuild properly in the summer? I think that's what they're going to do. I don't agree with that, but it's hard. It's a difficult window, so you might have to do it every January anyway. As long as, as long as we get, if it's just short term, as long as we get a central defensive midfielder. <laughs> yeah. And finally, um, probably my favourite question mm-hmm. is from Liam, Liam McLennan. What is your favourite curry? South Indian garlic chilli chicken for the Karma and Whatburn. Go wow. if you <laughs> go. Honestly, one of the best Indians in Scotland wins the award at the Curry Award. What the Curry Awards? That's a thing. Mm-hmm. They got awarded it for like Chris Tarrant uh, and David Cameron one year. Gave them the trophy on the stage. Cool. That is cool. Aye. And it's in Whatburn, which is just down the hill for where I'm from. Karma deal. Karma. Telling you, go to it. There's a wee free plug for the Karma. Um, I was always getting slagged because me, uh, me and my the, my best mate um, who you know wind up Dave but uh, at his stag dude there was the 10 of us that went and ever since then we've kind of tried to go for a curry every uh, two or three months and I always got slagged because I always got a korma well I'm korma every time yeah, um, and kormas are brilliant I do love them but uh, I, you know uh, I, not a fucking curry <laughs> but you know more recently uh, lambuna you know I really enjoy a lambuna yeah, so that's that's what I've been ordering the last few times. I'm very beige with mines as well, Gav. I'm with you with the Cormar butter Cormors chicken. are amazing. It tastes amazing. I tell amazing. you what, right? It doesn't taste like anything. It does. It My mum like gets a, like a paste for the butchers. Uh-huh. Like a, a Chinese curry. Oh my God. It's it's amazing. I'm not doing handmade curries. I'm the same as Kevin Bridges. <laughs> Who's rice? <laughs> you get a Chinese, you get a Chinese. I know. You're not going to start making your own. You know, what we'll do is we'll get the we won't get the curry from the Chinese. We'll we'll, we'll make up the paste that I bought for the butchers. I swear to God, but, mate. No, it's 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 unreal. To be fair, I never even considered that. My favourite curry probably is curry sauce. For we need to stop uh, talking about food and save this for <laughs> food talk. <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need content from when we start it. So, um, I I uh, shout out to Liam by the way. If anybody's seen the the photo that Hibs put of the Hibs fans, mm-hmm. uh, he's the one that's looking right at the camera with his arms in the air. Yeah, back, um, background for life. Aye, that's good for you. Aye. Right, well, I think we'll 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 wrap it up there. Mm. Um, as always, get Quick, in touch. what was your prediction for the Hamilton game? You never said. Oh, pff, four nine hubs. Cool. You uh, en- have you enjoyed hosting? Aye, aye. It's been a while. It's been a while since I obviously done it. Last time I done it was on was on radio. Not that I'm bragging. 
<laughs> but um, I know it's it's weird when you get in, when you're so used to a format and yeah. being like you. Oh, this has been this really weird for me and as well. Me <laughs> being where you are, it's been normal so not for me. I've just done what I know. <laughs> my arses and splinters because I see changes. <laughs> no, I have enjoyed it. I mean, anybody who listens, let us know what you thought. If it's something you'd like to see more regularly um, I'm not getting get, punted I'm not get, no just more, more to cheers like, to the 100 episodes Gab now fucking be it <laughs> um, I but we'll still use your facilities <laughs> to record it but no just in case you know you might like to hear Gav's opinions as a pundit you yeah. might like to hear my ramblings as a host you might like to hear Dave being Dave um, so I let us know um, Hibs Talk on Facebook HFC Talk on Twitter and um, Gav, once me and Dave have cleared off, Gav will have this up on the usual channel. So listening, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Podbean, <laughs> whatever else that you get your... Stitcher. You, What's the one you use, Dave? Castbox. Castbox, yeah. Subscribe this, whenever you get some it. weird like an Android thing, eh? Aye. Castbox well, is class, man. That, yeah, it's Android, so it's immediately... Oh, I can't stand Apple, so... I've started listening to more podcasts than Spotify. Spotify's getting better for podcasts. I am. Uh, Spotify is quite good for it. Aye. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, so subscribe wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for listening. Yeah. So. Right, bye. You know, you got to finish no, it up. No, I'll do the sign-off. Yeah, you guys the sign-off. You were hosting. Well, who who does a good sign-off? Just do it as if you're Roman Bardwaj Scotland today. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Good night. <laughs>